In this video, we'll take a look at a routine flight, Northwest 757, from Milwaukee to Minneapolis, to get you better acquainted with normal operations. Upon arrival at the aircraft, the crew will commence their pre-flight duties. For this flight, we will have the captain be the first crew member to enter the cockpit, while the first officer performs the exterior pre-flight. A check of the aircraft and flight attendant logbooks is required before accomplishing the cockpit pre-flight. Ensure a proper maintenance release is recorded along with fuel, oil entries, and check for current discrepancies and EP-19s. If necessary, consult the MEL-CDL for any requirements or restrictions. It is normal practice that electrical power is already established by the time the crew arrives at the aircraft. If this were not the case and electrical buses were not powered, the safety check would be performed. The captain will now perform the cockpit preparation procedures. Check cockpit lighting as needed. Position the IRS mode selectors to nav. Next, enter the present position on the position initialization page. Remember, the gate FMS code from the 10-7 page should be used if available. Check the utility and galley buses powered. Check fuel status, cabin temperatures, and check ICAS indications to ensure adequate oxygen, hydraulic, and oil quantities, and for any status messages. The pre-flight now moves to the overhead and sidewall panels for a check of the circuit breakers. Returning to the left side of the overhead panel, the captain now begins the snake. Specific details of the preflight can be found in section 4.11 of volume 1 of the aircraft operating manual. We will follow the captain through the preflight and also point out differences between older aircraft and the newer 5600 series. After ensuring the IRS selectors in NAV the overhead snake is momentarily broken up by programming the FMS CDUs. The IDENT page is checked to verify the proper database, currency, and performance factors. The position initialization page is rechecked to ensure the best available position was entered and the correct time is indicated on the GMT line. The route is now entered on the route page. If required, the departure arrival page will have to be accessed to program a SID or STAR. The performance initialization page is selected and all known items will be entered.
To enter cruise winds, the legs page will first have to be selected, thereby allowing access to the route data prompt. Waypoint winds from the flight plan are then entered. Descent winds are subsequently entered by selecting the descent page followed by the forecast prompt. When weight data and departure information becomes available, the FMC preflight can be completed. This is verified by checking preflight status after selecting initial ref and line selecting takeoff. The performance initialization page is last selected in anticipation of receiving weight data. After completing the FMC preflight, we return to the overhead panel. On the 5600 series aircraft, the anti-skid switch has been removed. Newer aircraft have the voice recorder which has a status light instead of a monitor indicator. Annunciator lights are checked as a first flight of the day item. Note the TAT light, which should be written up and replaced. The 5600 series aircraft have two fuel crossfeed valves. The indicator lights test is also a first flight of the day item. VNAV will be armed at this time and, if desired or required, LNAV also. The Autoland status annunciator need only be checked as a first flight of the day item. The auto brake selector in the 5600 aircraft will have the additional RTO position, which should be selected at this time. When checking the status page on the 5600 aircraft, you may see a comparator byte status message if the IRSs are not in the nav mode. The weather radar is another first flight of the day item. it must be checked off on every flight. The manual stab trim levers seen here have been replaced on 5600 aircraft by alternate stab trim switches.
The final item on the captain's pre-flight is the engine, APU, cargo fire, overheat test. It is another first flight of the day item. After returning from the exterior pre-flight, the first officer ensures items listed in section 4.12 of volume one of the AOM are on board and properly stowed. The pre-flight then commences at the accessory panel. Greg, how's it look outside? Oh, it's a beautiful day for flying. Good. Having completed both the flight attendant and cockpit briefings, the captain ensures fueling okay, is complete so and good. fuel on board Check meets dispatch board release requirements. So far, okay. this, this the first good. officer records the current ATIS and also reviews the fuel slip for reasonableness. Fuel on board requirements and proper distribution are also checked. If ACARS is available, PDC procedures will be used. Otherwise, utilize voice procedures at a time convenient for both crew members. Upon receipt, verify altitude clearance set in the MCP, proper transponder code set, and proper route is active. Okay, Gary, Milwaukee Brew 3, S file 2000, squawk 3414. The preliminary MGL is reviewed by both crew members to allow the crew to anticipate takeoff requirements. Looks good, so I'll double check that. Okay. I agree, 180,000. The captain will then call for the pre flight check. Pre flight check, please. Yes, sir. Upon receipt of the closeout MGL, Weight data is verified and weather observations reviewed. Oh, that's in agreement with ACARS. When ready for pushback, the crew performs their before start floats. Stand by. Before start check, please. The captain checks the door lights out, places the electric hydraulic pumps on. the red anti-collision light on, and verifies the side window is over center and locked. The first officer places the fuel pump switches on, places the flight attendant advisory light switch to sterile, places the seat belt switch on, and verifies the side window is over center and locked. Door lights. Out. Electric hydraulic pumps. On. Red and collision light. On. Fuel pumps. On. Seat belt sign. On. Flight attendant advisory. Cockpit sterile. Side windows. Over center and locked. Over center and locked. Before start checklist complete. Upon completion, a pushback clearance is requested and verification that all passengers are seated is made. Ground Northwest 308 pushback from uh, gate number one. 359 is cleared to push. Northwest 359 is cleared to push. 
Roger, ground. Uh, we have our turn. The captain will now advise the pushback coordinator the INS and nav, door lights out, brakes released, and cleared to push. Clear to start. Roger, clear to start. Start the right engine. Starting the right. Rotation. Oil pressure. After starting the right engine, the first officer places the isolation valve switch to closed and turns the right pack selector to auto. After the last engine is stabilized, the captain calls for engine anti-ice, if required, pack, while the first officer running. performs the before taxi flow. Your pins are removed. The Three APU switch is placed to Boy, off, unless left. performing a delayed engine start. The engine anti-ice switches are placed on if called for. The left pack control selector is placed to auto. ICAS recall checked and ICAS status checked. If required, follow ICAS status messages prior to takeoff supplemental procedures. With the wave off received, the captain calls for the before taxi check. Or taxi check, please. Engine in ice. It's off. Wave off. Receive. Before taxi check complete. Here. Taxi clearance, please. Clear right. Flap 15. Flap As the taxi is commenced, the captain calls for the appropriate flap setting. Section 4.110 of SMAC discusses procedures in detail but in general, at weights above 180,000 pounds, conditions must be favorable to allow single-engine taxi. Above 200,000 pounds, single-engine taxi is prohibited. Prior to or during the taxi out, the captain checks the flight controls for full travel. The first officer receives weight data and enters the zero fuel weight on the performance initialization page. The actual takeoff weight should not exceed the XTOG or the RTOG for the selected runway, flap setting, thrust rating, or runway condition. If not previously done, the departure runway is selected. The correct takeoff data card is then displayed. V2 is set in the MCP. Airspeed bugs are set. And stabilizer trim is set. After verifying all previous entries, the captain calls for the taxi check. Taxi check. Allowable takeoff weight's been checked. Isolation valve is closed. Flaps 15 V2. 134, takeoff number is checked and set. 134, takeoff numbers checked and set. Flaps. 15, 15. And trim. 0, 0, 4.0. Controls? Free and normal. Taxi check is complete. Upon completion of the taxi check, the captain calls for the all engines check. All engines check. The APU is off. Thrust mode. Takeoff to thrust set. And recall and SAS has been checked. All engines check complete. As the aircraft approaches the runway, and after being informed by the lead flight attendant the cabin is ready for departure, the first officer makes the pre departure sir. announcement. Flight attendants prepare for departure. Both pilots verify map accuracy, ensure okay. flight directors are on, and VNAV armed. 
the first officer verifies the correct transponder code and selects RATA on the mode selector. The captain calls for the before takeoff check. Before takeoff check, please. Yes, sir. Flight tents are notified. The packs are in auto. Auto brake selector is off. Flaps. 1515. Transponder. Cosent RAT. As the aircraft takes the runway, the captain turns on the landing lights and the, the white anti collision light. The if the first the officer is the pilot flying, the captain states, You have the aircraft. The first officer acknowledges with, I have the aircraft. The power is initially advanced to approximately 1.1 EPR then to the selected thrust by 60 knots. The first officer calls Engage the engage Eeper. The pilot not flying calls 80 knots throttle hold. This will be confirmed on the ADI. 100, 100 and each successive 20 knot increment is called. At three to five knots prior to rotate V1 BR, degrees. the pilot not flying calls rotate 15 degrees. Positive rate? Gear up. Here's up. At 500 feet, the pilot flying calls for heading select or LMAP. Heading select? If not selected prior to takeoff. If a flaps 20 takeoff was made, the pilot flying calls for flaps 15 at 1,000 feet. Climb thrust. Climb thrust is called for and the flaps are retracted on schedule. Remember, during a low altitude level off with VNAV selected, the speed bug will slew to the speed at which altitude capture occurred. The crew will have to manually set the bug to 250 knots or VZF, whichever is desired. Flaps up. Departure notice 359 is 2700 for 3000. Northwest 359, radar contact. Right autopilot in command. Right command. Northwest 359, climb and maintain 1 1000. I maintain 1 1000, Northwest 359. 1 1000. 1 1000. Passing 10,000 feet, the captain places the landing light switches off. The pilot not flying places the flight attendant advisory switch to non-sterile and the radar on. Climb check. The pilot flying then calls for the climb check. Landing lights are off. Lights are off. Climb check complete the transition altitude. Thank you. Passing the transition altitude, the altimeters are set to 29.92 inches and the pilot flying calls, 2992 inches, and the flight level passing. 2992 inches, flight level 180. At an opportune time, the pilot inches, not flying will complete the flight plan time estimate. Line checks complete. Thank you. At cruise altitude, the crew will monitor and manage systems as necessary. This will include fuel management, navigational, and communication procedures. Once adequate landing information becomes available, the pilot not flying can program the approach in the FMC. Information, Bravo's turn, ILS runway 29 left. Roger, Bravo and ILS 29 left. Would you put ILS 29 left okay. in for me, please, and then uh, set it up? And ILS 29 left. In addition, nav aids will be tuned. Turn the ID on for you. Thank you. Allowable landing weight checked. Approach data card displayed. Airspeed bug set and checked. And the ETA updated on ACARS if necessary. Mining numbers are good. ACARS agrees. 170 numbers are good, and I've got that one. 170, and I'm set. Leaving cruise altitude or prior to 18,000 feet, the pilot flying conducts the approach briefing. Hey, I have 11 Bravo 1 from Minneapolis, ILS 29 left. Date is 15 December 95. Inbound course is 299, frequency is 1103. We're set up with that. We'll cross Narco at 2643. 
decision height will be 1023. Both crew members set the minimums bug for the approach to be flown. We need RVR of 1800 or half mile. The captain also arms the auto brakes. I'd like to have auto brakes one, please. And I agree with this and the FMS, the FMC and the plate check. You have the aircraft? I have the aircraft back. At the transition altitude, both pilots set their altimeters and the pilot flying announces the setting and altitude passing. The pilot not flying repeats the same call out while checking the altitude passing. Following the altimeter check, the pilot not flying pushes the ICAS recall switch and status switch to check for any messages. The captain places the wing landing light switches on and verifies the white anti-collision switch on. Both pilots ensure their shoulder harnesses are on. The pilot flying then calls for the descent check. Descent check. Descent check. Status altimeters. Allowable landing weight is checked. Descent checks complete. When below 18,000 feet, but not lower than 12, the pilot not flying places the flight attendant advisory switch to sterile. The pilot flying then calls for the approach check. Approach check. Approach check. Approach briefing. Completed. PGA. 137. Approach number is checked and set. 137. Approach number is checked and set. Minimum bugs? Set 1023 feet. Set 1023 feet. Approach frequencies and course? 1103, 299 degrees. 1103, 299 degrees. Auto brakes are one. Coach checks complete. The aircraft is configured in accordance with SOPA and SMAC. Flaps to one. When flaps one is set, but no flaps later one. than 10 miles from touchdown, the pilot not flying presses the forward cabin call button twice to advise the flight attendants of the short time remaining before landing. Flaps 30, landing check. Flaps 30, landing check. Here is down in green, flaps 30-30, speed brake, arm, landing checks complete. Thank you. After touchdown, the pilot not flying calls reversers normal, Reverse normal. as the ICAS enunciation changes to green. Then 80 knots and 60 as the speeds are approached. 80 knots. 60. I have the aircraft. You have the aircraft. Aircraft is 359, we'll go. After clearing the runway, the captain calls flaps up after landing check. He places the landing flaps light up, switches up. off, up, the up, white anti-collision switch off, places the speed brake lever in the down detent and the auto brake switch off. The first officer parks the ILS frequency, places the transponder to standby, verifies the radar off, sets the stab trim at four, selects the appropriate field elevation in the MCP altitude window, places the flight directors off, places the anti-ice switches off if not required, and, if needed, starts the APU. The first officer reads and verifies items on the after landing check. APU is on, after landing check complete. At the captain's discretion, unless specified otherwise on the JEP 107 page, right engine, right? the right engine may be shut down for taxi in. After shutdown, the first officer places the isolation valve to open, the associated anti-ice switch off if it was on, and places the associated engine fuel pump switches off. 
Approximately one aircraft length from the gate, the first officer places the flight attendant advisory switch to non-sterile. Once stopped at the gate, the captain sets the parking brake, checks for good pressure, and places or calls seat for the seatbelt sign switch seat to on. off. APU is online. If APU or external power is established, both engines are shut down. After all engines are secured, the FO places the fuel pump switches to off, the anti-ice off, red anti-collision light off, isolation valve open if not already done so, and checks the ICAS status display. Parking check. Flight 10 advisory. The parking check is next accomplished and, when necessary, the securing check is completed. Off. Exterior lights. Set. Red and collision light. Off. Seat belt sign. Off. Isolation valve. Open. Fuel control switches. Cut off. Chalk signals. Receive. Brakes. Off. Parking check is complete. Thank you. The captain ensures logbook entries are made for flight times, oil and fuel quantities, and the IRS errors. Either pilot may make these entries. Specific procedures for various types of approaches can be found in Volume 1 of the Aircraft Operating Manual. It should also be pointed out that in emergency situation, the captain has the authority to deviate in order to maintain safety. This concludes the Normal Ops video. If you have any comments or questions, please contact the Fleet Training Captain. Thank you.